and welcome to another book versus movie. This one has been a long time coming. Um, basically, this movie was released a couple of weeks ago, but I haven't managed to find somewhere showing it that I could get to. So I was in New York the weekend that it was released and just none of the cinemas there seemed to be showing it. I had the time to go and see it. I was all ready to like literally take my tripod and the book with me and film it straight away so you guys could see it straight away. But um, yeah, so I was a little bit concerned that I wouldn't be able to see it, that it would kind of like leave the uh, movie theatres before I was able to, but I finally saw it yesterday. Um, I did a trailer reaction to, well, a preview trailer reaction to the um, movie trailer for every day. Uh, and so I will leave that linked up here in case you want to watch that before you watch this, because it has the whole trailer in it and it has my initial reactions to it. Uh, so it goes nicely hand in hand with this video. Um, but yes, this is the movie Every Day is based on this book, Every Day, by David Leverton, but it's also based on the kind of companion novel to this one, Another Day, which I also read. I don't know why it took me so long to read both of these books. I read them back to back, but... Um, I bought this when it was released and then I waited until I heard the news about the film to actually read it um, and I listened to them both on audiobook which was really interesting because um, obviously hearing it read by narrators is different and I've just reread the last kind of 50 or so pages just because when I watched the movie I was I hadn't remembered the ending the way it was but I'll go on to talk about the ending in a little bit this uh, video is going to be spoiler free I'm not going to talk about any spoilers the only spoiler will be if you kind of like haven't read the book and you don't want to know any of the character names or kind of like the premise behind the book which if you've seen the trailer or read the synopsis of the book you'll be fine um, so first of all, the fact that this is, um, the movie is every day and another day rolled into one. It being a movie and not a book, they kind of couldn't have done it just as every day because every day is from A, A's perspective and another day is from Rhiannon's perspective and those are our two main characters and so just to do it from A's perspective would have had Rhiannon's perspective in there as well. So they had every day and another day rolled into one for the movie, um, which I obviously really liked. I liked the fact that we got to spend quite a bit of time with Rhiannon and see her reactions to things. It's almost like it's more based on another day than it is on every day because we see quite a bit more of Rhiannon than we do necessarily of A. We see A waking up every day in his new body and examining his surroundings and kind of getting to grips with who he is, but those bits are quite brief, whereas we see more of Rhiannon on her own with her family. And I really liked that because I liked the fact that we got to see Rhiannon's perspective in another day and to find out a bit more about her as a character than we learned about her just from her interactions with A in this book. Um, so yeah, I was really happy with the fact that, yeah, it was, it, it does really feel a bit more like it leans towards another day than every day. Um, and I love these books like together as a pair um, I think, you know, this on its own is fantastic, but I like the fact that we had the two of them together um, and I liked Another Day just as much as I liked Every Day. And if you are planning on reading them, I would um, recommend doing them back to back and I would recommend the audio, although I, I picked up this one. I'd had the US copy and I picked up this one and I've been reading a lot on my Kindle recently. I'm like, wow, the font in this one is really big and really spaced out, so it's easy enough to read. I'm going to put the book down now. Um, so the... The thing that struck me in the trailer was um, how diverse the actors they've chosen to play A are. Obviously in the book the characters that he wakes up with are all a nice diverse range of characters and I wasn't sure if because this is a movie and it's Hollywood they would kind of pick out the more mainstream characters and kind of like leave out the more diverse characters. But in the trailer, it seems like they um, did pick out the diverse characters and we've got a nice sort of broad range of, um, 
representation. Um, having watched the whole movie, I think that it would have been nice, even if they'd just shown it as like a very quick montage, it would have been nice to see a few more of the characters he wakes up as. We get to see so many different characters in the actual book. And I think they cut out some of the, I don't know, some of the more interesting characters. Having just reread the ending, there's one particular character that he wakes up as and, um, uh, he wakes up as a female and she is in a relationship and she wakes up in the arms of her girlfriend and that's like kind of cut out of the movie and perhaps we could have had a little bit more of that in the movie but I was still really happy with the characters that we saw and the characters that were shown and as I say a bit more screen time was given to Rhiannon than just in every day um, because it's based on another day as well. Um, there is a whole uh, storyline based on um, when A wakes up as Nathan, which is quite early on in the book and plays quite a, a pivotal role in both the book and the film. Um, and there's a little sub-storyline that happens towards the end of the book that um, just doesn't happen in the movie at all. Um, and that's why I kind of reread the ending of the book just now because I was watching the movie and I was like, have I kind of like missed this? Like, I didn't go out and miss it, I promise. Um, but maybe I re I'm remembering it wrong. But yeah, there's this whole section that's missed out. Um, and I'm not sure if that was a choice because of timing or because in a movie it would have taken sort of longer to embed that storyline and longer to explain. Um, because the character that's involved in that extra storyline does pop up in the movie but he just has the one line and we don't see him again which is really interesting um I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing I just think it's interesting that it's missing from the story altogether and if you've read the book you'll know the thing that I'm talking about because it involves Nathan but I'm not going to give any spoilers if you haven't read the book I haven't seen the movie um I also uh, really enjoyed the way um, Rhiannon's interactions with A are portrayed in the film. Um, in the book, their, their interactions are sort of quite intense and you get quite a lot of feeling from them. And there was parts that made me cry and parts that made me go, oh. Uh, and um, it's the same in the film. And I'm really pleased with the way that they've done that. I'm really pleased with the way that you can see um, you know, the actress playing Rhiannon gets that recognition of A despite him being in a different body every time she sees him. Um, and I really like the fact that no matter what body he was in, she still interacts with him in the same way because she's got that feeling with him. Obviously not in the very beginning, but I really like the way that that was done in the film. And then the ending itself again feels quite different to the um book there's a one sort of particular character that a wakes up as towards the end of both the film and the book and this particular character is very significant but i felt like he becomes more significant in the film than he is in the book. Having just reread the very ending of the book, I feel like it's it's brushed over a little bit more in the book, but it's really played up in the film, and it, it does make the ending feel very different. I really liked the fact that this character gets more attention in the film. I really liked the way they did it in the film, um, which. It, it's kind of surprising for me to say I liked the ending of the film better than I liked the ending of the book, but I really did. It felt, um, because they spent more time on this character, it felt like it ran a bit deeper and it was a little bit more emotional. And so, yeah, that's kind of, that was, obviously, you remember the ending, that's your kind of takeaway. But yeah, my takeaway was that the ending was quite different, quite, quite different, um, and I preferred the ending of the film than I did the book. But some of the beautiful dialogue that is woven throughout the book, especially some of the things that are said at, towards the end of the book, 
are in the film like some of the dialogue is there some of the things they say are in the film and I loved that so if you are a fan of David Leverton's actual writing the things that he puts in his characters mouths then you will not be disappointed in the film if you're planning on just seeing the film and not reading the book then I think it's a really it's a really good good job done and um, the things that I kind of took away from the book I felt came through in a similar way throughout the film but I had forgotten that the script was actually written by Jesse Andrews who's the author of Me, Earl and the Dying Girl which I also loved the film of I need to do a book versus film on that one and I had completely forgotten I knew from having watched the trailer and like looked into a little bit and then I completely forgot until the credits rolled and I was like oh yeah of course um, and so I think that is why the film feels kind of just as beautiful as the book does so yeah that's my takeaway I, I can definitely recommend the film definitely recommend the book and if you are a fan of audiobooks can definitely recommend doing the audiobooks back to back but if you want to save time obviously the film is much shorter and it takes into account the two books not just the one and I think they did a really good job of combining it David Leverton's dialogue is in there, but don't be expecting the ending to be exactly the same if you are already a fan of the book. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I love making these book versus movie um, videos and I will have one for uh, Love, Simon, which is the uh, adaptation of Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda. I'm in the process of uh, getting ready to reread it ready for the film so I will have that coming up pretty much as soon as the film's released so you can look forward to that one I like coming back from the cinema and making the video straight away so it's fresh in my mind and then if you're planning on seeing it over the weekend you can uh, use my video as a guide as to whether to do it um yes uh let me know in the comments if there's any other book versus movie videos you would like me to make because I'm always looking for ideas of what I can read and watch next um, because a lot of these are rereads for me anyway so that's great and yeah I will have another video for you next week I've got a big book haul coming up and um, another kind of special haul as well uh, so I will see you in my next video thanks so much for watching bye <laughs>